Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Yat et also a kona yahigi, she a y of waiko inisha, Odikoja initially, Hanagathi Bashish team, Tsisi Ahe de Nasha. Hello, everyone. My name is Wyatt Waiko. I am Saltwater Clan, born for the one who walks around Clan. And I'm originally from Pine Springs, Arizona. Like a number of Native American students who attend Flagstaff High School, I did not live at home. Instead, I lived in dorm so I could obtain a successful education. Although I left my family, my people, and my culture on the Navajo Reservation eight years ago. My mom and I always knew there was something perfect at Flagstaff High School. As I look back, I can say it was the right choice for me. I am forever grateful for the gateway of opportunities that Flagstaff High School has offered me and opened doors to opportunities for me. Separated from my family, numerous people contributed to my success. But one person in particular inspired me to achieve and bridge the gap between reality and all my dreams that have come true. Catherine Pastor is a wonderful school counselor who goes above and beyond to help her students succeed and achieve as all they can do. If it weren't for Ms. Pastor and her tremendous help with recommendations, essays, resumes, and tests, I would not be the person I am today, obtaining a bachelor's degree in kinesiology and psychology with a minor in biology at Cornell College in Mount Vernon, Iowa. Ms. Pastor is a model of what really makes a great counselor, kind, energetic, dedicated, motivated, and caring. Even though it has been four years since I graduated from Flagstaff High School, Ms. Pastor continues to reach out and assist with any questions I have. On behalf of all students at Flagstaff High School, I can truly say Ms. Pastor helped set the path for a higher education for all her students. Thousands of students share similar stories of inspirational educators who share their lives, like how, who shape their lives one way or another, just like how Ms. Pastor shaped mine. And I am forever grateful for that they are being recognized today. On behalf of all students, staff, faculty, and administrators on all education levels, I would like to appreciate Ms. Obama and the American School Counselor Association for honoring and recognizing these incredible, outstanding counselors nationwide for their work, because oftentimes they go unrecognized for their efforts. On behalf of the American School Counselor Association, I would like to introduce the First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama. A cat. Having fun? Yeah. <laughs> We're at the White House. Okay. It's okay. We can say it. We're here. It's exciting. <laughs> Welcome to our second annual School Counselor of the Year White House Awards Ceremony. We are just thrilled to have you here. I want to start by thanking Wyatt uh, for that uh, very heartfelt introduction. Uh, we are so proud of him and students like him, uh, and I can't wait to see everything that you're going to achieve in the years ahead. We're so proud of you. And I know there are many students out here who are here supporting the men and women on this stage, and we're proud of you all. Just keep working hard. Uh, I also want to thank Acting Secretary King, uh, who is here today. Thank you so much for being here and for all your work. I want to recognize Richard Wong. Um, the executive director of the American School Counselors Association. There you go, Richard, how are you? It's good to see you, saw me looking for you. As well as Jill Cook and the entire team at ASCA. Thank you all. And of course, most of all, I wanna thank all these, these guys up on the stage. I want to thank school counselors across this country for everything you all do for our young people. Uh, I know firsthand the kind of impact that you all have on a child's life. Um, growing up, uh, so many of us, including me, uh, were fortunate enough to have someone in our lives, uh, some caring adult who decided that they were going to be on our team, someone who pushed us when we wouldn't push ourselves, who supported us maybe when we didn't have the support that we needed someone who refused to give up on us, no matter how badly we screwed up. And so many of us have gotten to where we are today because of that person. 
because of their unyielding love and their unwavering belief in our potential. And for so many young people in this country, that person is you, our school counselors. That's the kind of impact you all have every single day with every recommendation letter you write, with every college visit you organize, with every hour you spend taking students through their struggles and walking them through their applications and the FAFSA forms and helping them make good choices for their future. And I know you don't always get the recognition you deserve for what you do, but if anyone in this country has any doubt about the impact you all are having, uh, today I just want to share just a few testimonials from students about these amazing uh, men and women, these, this year's finalists. And I want to start with uh, Chris Owen from Pickering Town, uh, Pickerington, Ohio. Uh, one of her students wrote, and, and this is a quote, she said, she loves what she does. She says it's not an obligation, it's an opportunity for her to impact the lives of students. She has changed my life and she has changed so many other lives because she believes in students. And then there's uh, Rob Lundeen from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, one of his students said, uh, I'm the first in my family to go to college and it's because of him that I'm going. And I don't know what I'd do without Mr. Lundeen. Uh, one of Kim uh, Rakedall's students at Olympia High School in Olympia, Washington wrote, she said, one day uh, Ms. Rakedall approached me during lunch to give me a scholarship application highlighted and annotated just for me. <laughs> she says, I sometimes think she cares too much. <laughs> she says, if she has information for a stu student, she will hunt them down just to give it to them. Way to go. And then there's Samantha Vidal from Franklin, Indiana, and one of her students wrote, uh, during my lifetime with Ms. Vidal, I found that if I didn't know the answer, it was okay to get things wrong sometimes. She also let me know that as long as I do my best, it's okay. And when asked about Dorinda Johnson Ward from Raleigh, North Carolina, one of her students simply said, she helps me see myself as a beautiful young woman even though it might be hard to do that myself at times. She has truly helped me see who I am and what I'm capable of. And finally, there's our 2016 School Counselor of the Year winner, Catherine Pastor from Flagstaff, Arizona. Yay! <laughs> But I want to say a little bit more uh, about Catherine. I want to tell you about the impact she's had, not just on her students, but on the entire school district and on the counseling profession as a whole. Uh, during her tenure as a school counselor, Catherine created a FAFSA completion day and a college application completion day at Flagstaff High School. She helped build a new career and counseling center uh, she coordinated school counselors statewide to consolidate all the Arizona's college fairs into one single week so that they could reach more students in remote areas. She lobbied her school district to pay for counselors to attend a comprehensive college assessment training. And today, half the counselors in Arizona who've completed this training are from her district alone. And I, I, I could probably go on. Um, I was telling Catherine I know more about her and just met her a few minutes ago. <laughs> I felt so embarrassed. Um, but I, I know this woman. Um, but I think all the results speak for themselves. Uh, in just seven short years, Flagstaff High School has been, uh, they've seen a 13% increase in college acceptance rates and a 50% increase in the number of colleges that visit their campus. By the way, in her spare time, Catherine is an adjunct professor at uh, Northern Arizona University. Uh, she's training the next generation of school counselors. But perhaps most breathtaking of all is that in 2013, Catherine was diagnosed with a brain tumor and she had to undergo surgery and then endure extensive 
uh, rehab to learn to walk and talk again. But she refused to let any of those challenges stop her from serving her students. And I could read dozens of testimonials from young people like Wyatt whose lives have been transformed. But there is one in particular that I think perfectly describes the impact Catherine is having. This young woman wrote, um, she said, Mrs. Pa Ms. Pastor is, uh, she epitomizes genuine advocacy for students' success and often believes in them more than they believe in themselves. Students see this and they're inspired to reach higher, both in school and in their personal life. Ms. Pastor wants nothing more than to see students succeed and become the best versions of themselves. The students said that is school counseling. Yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's why I stole her quote. <laughs> and I'm standing here today because I believe that every child in this country deserves that kind of support and attention. And every child deserves the resources they need to succeed in school and then complete higher education. But when the average student to counselor ratio in this country is 471 to 1, and in some places, there's only one counselor for every 1,000 students. Let's just stop there for a moment, you know, as we think about the goals we want our kids to achieve and just think about we're at, what we're asking these men and women to do. When too many counselors just don't have what they need to do their jobs, when we look at all of that, what we know is that we still have a lot of work to do. And that's why we've reached out to companies and organizations across the country and ask them to step up on behalf of our school counselors. And today I am thrilled to announce uh, a few of these commitments. Uh, Merck has agreed to invest $1 million to expand the Counselors for uh, Computing initiative run by the National Council of Women in Information Technology. They're going to help uh, 1,400 school counselors advise up to a million students on pursuing careers in computer science. Good stuff. <laughs> Google has stepped up as well with their new uh, virtual reality technology, those Google cardboards, you've seen those? If you haven't, they're really cool. <laughs> Any student uh, with access to the internet will soon be able to take an exciting 3D tour of colleges across the country. So young people who can't afford to visit a school, and we know how important it is for kids to be able to get onto campuses and just see what college life feels like, you know, that's a big part of getting kids excited. Well, now kids can do the next best, best thing and get a 3D tour uh, from their own homes or their classrooms. I actually taped one of these virtual tours. It's really, really cool. Uh, and finally, I'm proud to announce that in this year's federal budget, there is an additional $15 million for our talent search program that helps disadvantaged young people fill out their FAFSA and college applications and pursue higher education. And we can thank our secretary and his team for that hard work. <laughs> So we're, we're making progress, um, but I want to be very clear as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're just getting started. I mean, there is so much more that has to be done and uh, no people understand that better than all of you, what you're facing, what you're being asked to do with so little. Uh, but for me, this isn't just about getting uh, more programs and resources for our school counselors today. Uh, all of this is really about creating a movement to support our school counselors for years, even generations to come. You know, it's, it's so, so true.
and that starts with, with simple awareness um, by making sure that people across this country truly understand the critical role that you play in educating our kids and preparing them for uh, good jobs and successful lives. I mean, we know our teachers are great. We reward them, we celebrate them, but sometimes we miss those other players in the background who have so much to do and so much control over the success of a student's life going forward. And that's why we, we started hosting the school counselor of the year ceremony here at the White House. We did this because we wanted to plant a flag and send a clear message that what you all do uh, isn't a luxury. <laughs> it's not an extra. Uh, just the opposite. The, the work that you do is absolutely essential for the future of our kids, the future that we say we want our kids to have. You know, reaching those goals, getting more kids into college, getting them better educated and better prepared for the jobs of the future. We gotta support you if we want them to do that. So I am going to commit right now today to hosting the third annual Counselor of the Year Award <laughs> ceremony here at the White House next year. Now, this might be one of the last events we host before they <laughs> kick us out in January of 2017, but we're, we're gonna do it. We're gonna get you back in here, and we're gonna keep shining that light on the work that you do uh, and ensure that whatever, whoever uh, lives here next will continue this tradition and this work. Uh, you all truly deserve nothing less. You all are heroes, and I want to end today as I started by once again thanking you. Thank you so much for your commitment to our kids' potential. Uh, thank you for the love and encouragement you give them every single day. You look at young people like Wyatt, there's nothing more fulfilling than knowing that you did something to create a young man like this. You all are amazing, and I look forward to continuing our work together and to honor and support you in the months and years ahead. Because no matter where I am, we're a team now. So as we said, we're stuck with each other, right? <laughs> and now it is my pleasure to introduce our 2016 Counselor of the Year, a woman who inspires us all from young people in her community to aspiring counselors across the country, Catherine Pastor. ever having a bad day, we're just going to watch this again and listen to all those wonderful stories that our <laughs> students said about, about us. It's an, it's an honor to be here today and representing school counselors from across our country. Thank you so much. Ms. Obama, we are forever indebted to you for the work that you have done for our profession. Really, we are. And for shining a light on the important... <laughs> for shining that light on the important work that we do for our nation's children. You have been an amazing advocate for us across our country, so thank you. Thomas Jefferson said, educate and inform the whole mass of people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. I believe passionately that school counselors are essential to this process. As school budgets diminish, our importance has expanded because we provide the critical services to our students. Thanks to the American School Counselors Association and others, school counselors throughout the country are implementing comprehensive programs from preschool through 12th grade. These programs have led to increased college acceptance rates, more scholarships and financial aid awards, 
in spite of college costs increasing. Our goal is to make post-secondary education more affordable and accessible to all students. Arizona has a program that assists students in earning college credit while attending high school. Jose Pada, a first-generation college student from Flagstaff High School, had the opportunity to attend Coquino Community College full-time, for free, for free, mm -hmm. while, while maintaining over a 4.0 GPA in high school during his junior and senior year. He is now attending Northern Arizona University and double majoring in chemistry and criminal justice wow. and is getting ready to apply to medical school. Wow. <laughs> Flagstaff and other districts across the country are partnering with institutions to bring more affordable costs to our students like Jose, who otherwise would not have the financial resources to attend. This is critical if we truly believe that to make today's students must reach higher to become tomorrow's leaders. School counselors also help our students in social and emotional development through small group and individual counseling supporting the student whose parent is currently in rehab, caring for our students that are living in homeless shelters, or advocating for that young man who's working a full-time high school job just to support his family. School counselors assist in the development of the whole child by removing these barriers that inhibit them from reaching higher. But we don't do this alone. As Wyatt mentioned in his remarks, Many people have contributed to his academic success by inspiring him and others like him to reach their goals. Our goal is to help students become confident, self-directed, lifelong learners. One such example is Katherine Wirtz, a Flagstaff graduate who pursued her degree in elementary education, and now she's a sixth grade teacher at Sanal Middle School in our district. Katherine learned life skills developed her goals, followed her dreams, and now is instructing and inspiring the next generation of student leaders. School counseling departments across our country are founded on the principles of advocacy, leadership, collaboration, and systemic change. We, counselors, promote academic, career, and social emotional development in an equitable manner encouraging all students throughout their personal and academic journeys. This is a continuous process, starting in preschool and continuing throughout post-secondary training. Educational entities must be a part of the solution, where the personal development of our students is complete, comprehensive, and global. School counselors recognize that a student's development incurs inside as well as outside of the classroom. And it is our job to create the bridge that makes post-secondary an education in the reach of all. Our nation must recognize that knowledge is power and absolve ourselves of any preconceived assumptions that place limits on any student. To preserve our nation's liberties, post-secondary education needs to be accessible to all. As school counselors, our professional focus must continue on providing these experiences that enhance and motivate our students to develop their unique personal philosophy regardless of their culture or ethnic demographic. President John F. Kennedy once said, children are the world's most valuable resource and its best hope for the future. We can say with some assurance that although children may be the victims of fate, they will not be the victims of our neglect. Again, I would like to thank the First Lady for valuing the work of our nation's school counselors. We do not determine a child's fate. We determine their destiny. I implore each of you to collaborate with school counselors to make sure that they are accessible, visible, and available so that no child is neglected, especially on our reservations, in our inner cities, in our rural areas, and in our economically deprived areas. 
We must continue to be the agents of change and the voice for students that do not have one. A school counselor's work is never complete. Together, however, we can help students achieve their dreams one at a time. Thank you so much for being here today and for honoring our profession. Thank you. 